All right, well, welcome back everybody. My name's Andrew. We're gonna do another unique build today. So a quick little story, then we're gonna to get to work. So my wife and I, we are water babies. We spend a pile of time on the rivers and on salt water every single summer, which means we buy a lot of ice. We're always filling up coolers and carrying drinks with us. Ice has been getting quite expensive, but we started looking into ice makers a while back. Holy moly, two to three thousand dollars is pretty common for a commercial ice maker, but still a small size that you can put at home. Way out of our budget and something we do not feel like spending money on. So, we were hanging out at the river one day with a friend who had an awesome idea. He took a side-by-side -side refrigerator that has a freezer on the left side, refrigerator on the right, and on the left side he put a trash can and made a chute in there and tripped his uh, freezer, his ice maker, to where it would always load ice into a plastic trash can bin. He started bringing ice to the river like that, so he did not have to buy ice anymore. He made a really neat homemade ice maker. So that got me really, really thinking, how could I make me a freezer ice maker? So if I'm showing you this video, I must have figured it out. I have ordered everything that I think that I need. Um, I have never seen nobody do this particular build before, so I'm kind of learning. I have went out to Sam's Club, because it's very hard to find deep freezers right now with COVID, and found a seven cubic foot deep freezer. Off of Amazon, I ordered a ice maker kit along with several other accessories and filters. I'll put all this in the description down below if you want to try this. But for less than $300, I am trying to build a probably several hundred pound ice maker, which would be equivalent to a two to $3,000 commercial unit. And there's some really neat reasons why I think this would work even better if I can figure this all out. We'll talk about that a little bit later. So let me get everything busted apart and see if we can figure out how to put this together and uh, make us our own homemade commercial ice maker. All right, so let's go over what I ordered real quick. I got a water filter. Again, this is all off Amazon. I'll include it down in the description. I bought a ice maker hose kit. So it just comes with a brass tap that can pierce a copper line or some other types of lines to send water over to the kit. And then I ordered an, what's called an actual ice maker kit. And it comes with, this is very important, uh, solenoid that cuts off and on. You have water that comes in right here and water that goes out. And the ice maker will actually kick this off and on to tell it whenever it needs water sent up to it. So this was a critical component. You come with some other drip tubes and all that'll go through the wall of the uh, freezer there and drip into the ice maker itself. And this should be the ice maker. So here we are, it's a uh, rather standard style ice maker. It makes, you know, looks like your standard style cubes that typically comes in a refrigerator. <clears throat> All right, now here's where things are gonna get interesting. All ice makers come ready to hook up to whatever style refrigerator that you have. So I think this one was a Frigidaire or Whirlpool model, I can't remember. So it's just gonna come with a standard harness that's not labeled for power in, power out. Same to the solenoid. However, it's only got two prongs, so, and it says 110 volts on it. It's pretty standard how we're going to hook that up. So I have to figure out power that goes into this and then power that it sends out to this. So I'm going to pop this cover off and just see, look around, see if I can figure out power in, power out. All right, so after kind of looking at everything, it's pretty straightforward. You can see the colors of these wires are your standard wiring colors. So you have black with a thermal resistor on it, or a thermal fuse, I should, should say. Uh, so there's your hot wire. You have white for neutral, again, standard colors, green for ground, and then the last wire that you're left with, this is what triggers and kicks on your solenoid, so it sends power out to this solenoid. So obviously, you'd have to have a neutral, and then this hot that'll come down to it. There's actually a trigger mechanism in here as this rotates around to send power to this, put water in the drip tray to fill the ice tray. It should energize it for probably five to seven seconds. This is what most ice makers do. All right, so I've been racking my brain on how I'm going to mount this ice maker in here and where I'm gonna mount it. I think I want it just like that because this little drip tray right here is where water goes in and I want that as close to the edge as possible so I have the shortest run of tube in here so the water doesn't freeze up. Now mounting it to the wall is an option but it's a very, very risky option. You have copper tubes that run all through this walls, just like on a refrigerator and AC unit. 
and I have no idea of knowing where those copper tubes are. And without having something like a thermal imaging camera to see where the copper tubes are cooling up, uh, you know, or cooling down, excuse me, I, I just don't know. You'd be drilling blind in, blindly, and if you were to drill into one of those, you're letting pretty toxic gas out, Freon out. And I'm noticing there's stickers all over this that says the Freon, and this one is extremely flammable, which is uh, kind of unusual. So the only thing I can come up with, there's this nice lip on the inside. That's actually where the basket sits in here. I happen to have some aluminum, scrap aluminum. You can get this at any hardware store, big box store, Lowe's, Home Depot. And uh, I just went over there and trimmed it to length to fit on that lip. It's plenty strong enough to support an ice maker. And you can see this ice maker has holes on the backside. So I'm gonna drop me some tabs down off of this aluminum that will uh, then allow me to screw that ice maker into it. And it's just gonna pretty much set like that. I'm wanting to get my ice out of this deep section anyway, so I don't really care about reaching underneath, which I can get to it right there. I just, I'm trying to think of a quick, simple way without tearing this whole thing apart and locating all the tubes. And keep in mind, all these walls are filled full of foam, so you can't really access the tubes anyways. And I've done tried lifting this top plastic bezel off. I'm gonna break it, it's glued down so tight. So I think putting this, uh, this thick aluminum like this, and like I said, dropping some tabs down, I'm about to build those, and hooking this to it is probably the best way to do it. And then I may actually take a small section out of this plastic to run my power cord and water tube over in from the side. And like I said, I just can't really find a good way to come through the walls without risking damaging the whole unit and letting Freon out everywhere, which I don't want to do. All right, this will be a good time to let you know, too, that my plans are to uh, come back and rough up the underside of this aluminum and this top plastic and put a two-part epoxy down so this can never shift or move. Um, it will probably be fine just like it is. I just don't have any epoxy today, and that's something I can come back and add at any time. I'll just have to make sure it's an epoxy that can handle sub-freezing temperatures. All right, as much as I hate to do it, I've got to get a drip tube over into that little tray and some wires up and out of here. The only thing I can think to do is uh, take a section of this plastic out. I can, I, I can always put some caulk back to make sure I still get a good seal. That tiny little opening that I'm going to fill with wires in a tube is not going to let that much efficiency out and make it to where it's not cooling. I just, I'm hesitant to drill through the wall Taking this little section of plastic out, yeah, it voids your warranty, but this kind of kind of this whole project does anyways. So uh, I think that's the safest thing to do. Gently cut down 
take a section out, maybe finish it with a razor knife. I want to make for sure there's no tubes underneath this. I don't want to go into anything. So here goes nothing. All right, so I went to Lowe's and could not find any four conductor wire other than some really huge stuff. So I bought some lamp wire. It's rated for 110 volts. It's 16 gauge, this is 18 gauge, so it's even bigger than this. And uh, we're just gonna have to be careful about how we mark it to know that we're getting the right power down. Now black is hot, white is neutral, so on this one, I am going to find, see there is a smooth wire and it's hard to see there's a wire with a bunch of ridges in it. I'm gonna make the one with ridges in it black. I'm gonna find it on the other end. This one right here. I'm gonna put some black on it. Now I know that is my black hot on the other end and that's my white neutral. Now on this next one, green is ground. So I'll use the slick wire right here. And the one with ridges again, I'll hook to the brown, which is power out. And I'll have to label this one a little bit different way. I'll probably put a bunch of dots on it. And since I did dashes on the other one, that way I'll know which one's what. And worst case scenario, I can always take my meter and come back and probe the ends of the wire here and the ends of this other wire and uh, you know find out which wire's what. So it's not the end of the world here but I'll label them in such a way that I should pretty easily remember them. All right, let me show you what I've done. And at this point, this is where you're absolutely taking your own risk here doing this. Um, obviously, the warranty's voided on this thing, and now you're messing with wiring. So I am honestly not gonna show you step-by-step -step how I did this, but long story short, this black power cable that's coming in has the same exact colors that uh, the wires in the ice maker does. You got your green for ground, you got your white neutral, and you got your black hot. So I hooked those up right there just like that. And then don't forget we had that one power wire coming down once the timer kicks off in the ice maker and it sends power down to the water valve. So the water valve needs a neutral, that white wire on one side, so you'll have two whites, one going to the ice maker, one going here, and you'll have that power wire coming down from the ice maker as well. Now I could have did this a lot, a lot more professional looking, but I had my reasons why. The, again, the tubes are on the outside, I don't care. They actually make stick on pads that you can run a zip tie through and I can get this nice and tight. I'm gonna go pick some up from the hardware store. And I ultimately decided to mount my water valve on the outside as well because I could have ran um, all this through the walls and wrist puncturing the tube and ruining the whole unit and I could have mounted the water valve inside and made this look nice and professional and clean. However, the thought of having leaky water valve inside with all the power and other components did not sit well with me. So I decided I'd put it on the outside. I need to space this off the wall anyways so it can breathe. So I didn't mind putting it right here. Got my power wires coming through a vent. Now my water stays on the outside not inside there again with all the wiring so it's very straightforward like i said i didn't show the hooking up because everything's color coded as long as you match your colors down from the ice maker to the colors on the wire there you can use the cord it comes with or you can wire in your own extension cord and just have two that come out one for the ice maker and uh, one for the freezer itself so now what i need to do is clear this whole section out because that's where it's going to go over there by the sink and i need to tap in water and plumb it into the bottom side of that water valve and uh, we're ready to plug it in and try it. All 
All right, so in the ice maker kit uh, that I got, and it's basically just tubing and this tap. This is the important piece. So there is a needle tap in here, whatever you want to call it, and it's got a clamp, and it's designed to go around copper tubing and some other different size tubings. But long story short, let me show you what we got going on here. So you use those other pieces, clamp it to a piece of pipe. It's got a nice rubber grommet here. And once you screw this in, you'll see that needle starts coming out. And that will actually like pierce your copper tubing, for example. And then once you tighten the bolts down and clamp this to the pipe, that rubber gasket right here seals everything up. So you actually pierce that with the needle, pierce your pipe, and then you can unscrew this to open it back up and let water through. So it's a little cut off valve pierce uh, all in one. Now, PVC and other types of pipe, I'm gonna, which I have, I'm gonna go ahead and pre-drill a small hole because I don't wanna crack it, but I've used these before on copper tubing and uh, they pierce no problem at all. All right, moment of truth. I have got my tap in right here to the water coming in the building. I've got it run behind to a filter, which I still need to mount up on the wall. I'm kind of checking everything for leaks right now. Filter is plumbed straight out into the bottom of the solenoid or water cutoff valve and then up and into the unit right there. So moment of truth, I have yet to plug this in. We're about to see if we fried this <laughs> and did it all for nothing or if it's gonna work. All right, I don't smell nothing fried. <laughs> and power light's working like it should. I'm gonna turn the compressor on. All right, compressor just kicked on. We'll go ahead and run this up to seven for quite a few hours, see if we can get it cold fast. Run light is on, even though it's hard to see. Should have read the sticker. Apparently it's got uh, some kind of thermometer in it. Obviously it says it will not produce ice to below 10 degrees. I'm assuming it will not trigger any of the mechanisms and allow water to flow into the tray until it reaches 10 degrees as well. So I'm gonna let this sit for a few hours and uh, just as soon as I hear it making ice, hopefully we'll uh, come over and record wrap this thing up all right so a quick little update we did make ice only just a few hours later however we've got a little bit of a problem that i knew could be a problem instead of running that tube up and over in here just the old plastic tube it froze up so it quit putting water into the ice maker so this plastic tube right here actually comes with the kit and uh, i figured i was gonna have to install that it's had a downward angle what i did is i notched a little more plastic out here and started at a downward angle and it's got an open top i'm assuming to allow some outside air into it so it never freezes up so now the tube stays on the outside it shoots water up in here water gravity flows down into the ice maker and uh you never have water just sitting in that tube over in here to freeze up so if this works i'm leaving this kind of just like it is right now, I'll come back and get me some plastic PVC. I'll, I'll design something on the outside where I can absolutely secure this. Also, to make for sure that the tube puts water down into the water catch, this piece of plastic came with the kit too. I just trimmed it down and it actually slides perfect over that water tray right there. So now when the water comes in, if it comes in with a high pressure, it'll bounce off the back go straight down into that water tray. At least that's the plan. So I'm letting it cool, everything cool back down and uh, we'll test this out. I'll let y'all know if this is the way I'm gonna wind up going. Then ultimately I'll come up with some way to really secure this better and kind of clean everything up. So another update, that kit also come with a bunch of these plastic extension tube sleeves. It just so happens it goes right over that piece I just showed you and I need to get water down. So I'm gonna see if I can heat this up enough and bend it into an elbow. It's probably gonna crease it some, but that's huge and it'll let plenty of water. I'd feel much better having an elbow straight down into that little uh, water catch tray than I would that uh, piece that I stuck in there. Although I think that'll work. I just would feel better about this.
All right, so looks like that's getting very close to working. It's not a perfect elbow, but I was blowing in there to kind of blow this back out to keep it from crimping on itself while it cooled down. And it looks like it's made me enough of an elbow, plenty big enough and open to allow water through. So let me trim this up and uh, I'll see if we can slide it on and get it to fit right down in that water tube. That actually worked out pretty good. All right, so there you are. I like that a whole lot better. There is my elbow now that comes right on this. I'm just going to call it a drip tube that comes near straight down into the ice cube catch. And now I don't have to worry about uh, water spraying at anywhere else. And I meant to call that water catch. All right, so this has been running for 24 hours. Let's take a look at everything. I don't see any water leaks. Everything looks good. Nothing over here. Let's take a peek at what we have. All right. And as you can see, it is about to dump some ice right now. So not a whole lot of ice. And that's one thing you have to keep in mind with these refrigerator ice makers. Since it's been running for 24 hours, let's go ahead and uh, weigh this ice out and see what we can expect it to produce. It's about to drop some right now. All right, so I just scooped all the ice out of the ice maker, put it in a bucket. I weighed the bucket empty. It's 0.37 pounds, so we'll deduct that from the total right here. So 3.75. Let's just uh, round that for ease of use and say it makes right at three and a half pounds in 24 hours. And most refrigerator models say three to four pounds so this is right within spec now being this is the first 24 hours i've run it it could get up to that four four and a half pound mark but let's talk about that all right so obviously that's one of the cons of having an ice maker like this versus a commercial unit a commercial unit can produce 40 maybe 80 pounds a day so if you're going to be taking ice constantly from one of these this may not be exactly what you're looking for there. Uh, now, here's the one cool thing about this. It just so happens there is enough room right here for a second ice maker. That's the beauty of having one of these machines. Actually, you could stack as many ice makers in here as you want. All I have to do is notch this again, run another tube, uh, and get another one of these kits. The kits are only $69 because I don't need all the rest of the parts. I could probably piggyback power off of that and then just make my own plug for both the ice makers. So I have already ordered a second ice maker. So that means I'm gonna have a total of about $370 in this unit versus the Manawalks and everything else I've looked at that'll hold this much at around two to $3,000. Now again, yes, those are gonna produce far more ice per day. So if you're filling up a cooler every single day, this probably isn't gonna work for you. But doubling up the ice maker, it looks like I probably can make somewhere around eight pounds a day. Here's the other thing you gotta keep in mind with refrigerators or freezers. There's something called thermal mass. Being that this one's completely empty, it's probably cycling a lot. Once you get more mass in there, uh, you know, more something that's, that's cooler, that's holding that temperature in, this will run a whole lot more efficiently. I don't foresee why I couldn't get an extra half a pound a day and round it up to four. So if I put two ice makers in here, and they give me eight pounds a day. Uh, what are we looking at? A little over 50 pounds a week of ice. Being that we only take 20 plus pounds on a weekend for a typical boating trip, awesome. This thing's gonna continue to outrun me. Now, whenever we go do a saltwater trip, I typically take 80 plus pounds of ice with me. That's where I'm really gonna put a dent in it. But if it's outrunning me week by week, that shouldn't be a problem. It's winter right now. So we're just there now heading into spring. I'm gonna let this fill up and I'm just guessing It'll probably hold 150 pounds of ice, just taking a rough guess, far more than I'll ever need. So it's always gonna fluctuate as I really dip into it. Maybe I need an 80 pound trip, but most of the time it's gonna be 20, maybe 40 pounds a week, and it's still outrunning me at that rate. So that's gonna be awesome. Plus let's face it, there's gonna be a lot of weekends that bad weather and things happen, a trip out of town. So now it's got two weeks that it's just outpacing me. The other thing you really need to keep in mind on a unit like this versus a commercial unit, Commercial units are power intensive. Why? Well, they're running more components to produce ice faster, 
but they only uh, produce ice somewhere a little over freezing, a little over 32 degrees. The ice is constantly melting. You have to run a tube outside your building because it's constantly melting the ice, making new ice. Not with this one. Once it's made, it's made. Here's the other cool thing about this one. This unit will run down to minus 10 degrees wide open. I've got it bumped back to run at zero degrees. I could really even run it up to 10 degrees, thus saving even more electricity. Plus, think about that. Right now, I have zero degree ice. That's far colder than what you get out of a typical commercial machine. So it's gonna last longer. My drinks are gonna be a whole lot colder and uh, you know it just makes this even that much more efficient. So 300 and something dollars versus two to three thousand dollars. I think this is gonna work out great. I'm already happy with what I'm seeing and crunching the numbers here. It's gonna produce enough ice for us. Most people are typical weekend warriors like us and you're not filling coolers all week long. So I think this is going to be absolutely perfect for that. I'll record the video as soon as my second ice maker comes in. That'll be a few days from now. And uh, I'll show you how I'm gonna double them up and we'll pro probably let it run 24, 48 hours, test the capacity again and to see if we can get to that eight pounds a day or 50 plus pounds a week, which I think will be perfect for us for everything that we do. Hopefully you found this educational and fun to watch. We'll catch you on the next video.